towards our final competitor in the startup arena for a prize of 10,000 US dollars straight from Tech in Asia and a very nice prize from the office. This is our last, our eighth and last competitor and uh, hailing from Singapore. Please help me in giving a warm Jakarta welcome for Garuda Robox and Polkit Jaiswal, everybody. Take it away, Polkit. Thank you. Right. So hi everyone, my name is Polkit and I'm from Garuda Robotics. We build unmanned aerial drone systems tailored to the specific needs of your business. We can build out the entire stack of hardware and software that you need to get things done faster and cheaper. about how awesome our product is, but I'd rather just show it to you. So you know what? I'll jump right into a demo, and I can promise you all one thing. That after this demo, you will never look at aerial drones the same way ever again. Um, so, um, I'm currently living in Harris Street, which is uh, about a couple of blocks down the road from where we are right now and uh, there's a coffee bean store on the ground floor and uh, I'm going to show you what our systems can do for this coffee bean store. Okay, so I actually need an, I actually need a order of a coffee, so uh, how about somebody from the panel of judges? Uh, um, how about Zayman? Uh, Zayman, are you okay with the double latte with extra whipped cream? No, I I'm not screwed. All right, I just remember finding. Okay, that's that's cool. Um, and another thing, I want you to get ten bucks ready. No, I'm I'm really serious about it. Ten bucks. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy the coffee. I'll, 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 I mean, if this is hard, then this can be on the router robotics. You can pay us later. All right, all right. So. Uh, what you're looking at right now is our web-based interface um, and what I'm going to do is create a drone mission that will execute this coffee delivery mission. So, uh, so my map is centered at where we are right now. Uh, so right here is Plaza do Pendo and this is Harris Suites. So what I'm going to do is uh, grab this flight pad module which will uh, start at uh, no, my hotel and there's a waypoint in the middle and it finishes off at Plaza Pendo. Okay, there we go. And I already have a bunch of options that have been configured. Okay, you know, the biggest problem with doing a live demo is that, you know, like, one lesson I've learned is that you should never do a live demo. <laughs> okay, let me, let me try that out. Try that out, try that out again. Okay, so it looks like the Wi-Fi has been switched, so we have to deal with that right now. Oh. So, it seems that the Wi-Fi has been walked by now, right now. Okay. Um. Um. So, let's see if there's still an opening right here. Okay, so I guess we just have to deal with it. So, what I'm, oh, so, okay, so basically, even before we came up on the stage, we had actually simulated a live mission from, uh, it starts at Plaza del Pindo, and, uh, sorry, starts at Harris Suites and ends at Plaza del Pindo. And, uh, you know, uh, the estimated time of arrival is like, was like supposed to be five minutes, but obviously I'm not gonna make same and wait for five minutes just to get a cup of coffee, right? No, I'm, I'm not going to make you wait that long. So, um, what I'm going to do is quickly switch to another view, which provides me a control panel view. So obviously, nothing is working right now because of the Wi-Fi, but that's not an issue. But what you would be able to see here um, is a bunch of five dots moving around on the same map, which gives you an overview of all your missions in just one screen. And, um, Imagine there are two dots that are actually entering this building right now, as we speak. 
and we are really interested in checking them out. So what I would be able to do is actually select one of these missions and I would be able to open them up in a, a different screen. So there we go. That's our live drone mission. That's that's happening right now. Remember, it's all simulated. It's not real. So um, now that the drone has disappeared disappeared from the map, it means um, and, and there's a blue marker on the building. So that just signifies that the drone has actually entered this building. Okay. So the drone is in the house. So if this drone was actually real, I would be able to switch to a live video feed and show you what the drone is actually seeing right now. Um, but you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and show you the live video feed. Incoming video feed request. Establishing the connection. Stand by. No internet again, so sorry guys. So the first one is not actually for saying in. This one's for um you know the lady in red. I meant when that's her, but so it seems that this is the drone that's gonna deliver Sayman's coffee. Okay, so say then here you go. Oh, by the way, this is on Garuda, so I'm just going to deposit this. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, coffee delivered via drones. Without the internet. So I think we all agree that what we just saw was awesome, in spite of you know the Wi-Fi disappearing for some reason. Um, but I want to let you all know that uh, the vision for Guerrero Robotics goes way beyond just doing trivial things like delivering coffee, right? So, say man, you're not uh, a thirsty guy, you're a guy who went up hiking alone in a desert canyon, and you accidentally stepped on a snake, re responded by sinking its poisonous fangs into your feet. And the only thing that can save you right now is a shot of antivenom that's actually not there in your medical kit. So what do we do? So, um, Say, man, I want you to do me another small favor. I want you to remove the lid of the coffee cup. And I want you to, and I want you to hold that up, whatever is inside it. Okay, so this is a syringe full of antivenom that was airlifted to you by an autonomous aerial drone that was deployed by park rangers from a nearby park ranger station. So these guys then help have to deploy a rescue mission with a helicopter, that would have cost them $50,000 just to come and pick you up. And, and it's sponsored by Coffee Bean. <laughs> sponsored by Coffee Bean, by the way. Um, and, so this is all about saving lives, right? Talking about saving lives, this drone could have been also deployed by a bunch of firefighters as soon as they got a call about a building on fire. So, this, will, so this drone would fly on ahead to the burning building and start beaming back live video. And so the firefighters can make better decisions about, you know, um, uh, how to allocate resources and then how to plan up everything. More like this. So, our drone systems are getting things done faster, cheaper, and better. But, um, the question is, how do we make all of this work? I have some really exciting things that I want to show you today. Garuda Cloud is our web-based system for managing your drone fleets. It is enterprise-grade and it is our flagship product. It is a one-stop shop for creating your own drone missions, uh, assigning them to drones, and checking on their status at any point of time. 
So this is what the control panel was supposed to look like in the internet dimension. Um, and uh, the best part is, all of this is web-based. So you can, act, you can harness the, the full power of the Garuda Cloud from any internet-enabled device. And so we have some really cool features, right? But one of the most important things that we really care about is safety. So if you remember the coffee shop mission, I mean, if it was live, uh, there would be a red zone on the map. And this red zone is, is actually a, a pedestrian bridge that's located about one block down the road from where we are right now. And um, when our drone is flying over this pedestrian bridge, it will, take, it, will, it will be extra careful and it will fly at a higher altitude so that it, um, you know, clears the way to the bridge. So, um, we also have custom hardware boxes that we call as the black boxes. And these black boxes act as a data link between the drone systems and the Garuda Cloud software platform. And um, they also take care of, uh, you know, sending commands to the drones and uh, sending back sensory and telemetry data. And more importantly, maintaining a video feed, which you would have seen um, in the coffee shop mission. So all of this leads to safe, autonomous drone operation. Now, finally, I have something to show you which uh, we are really excited to launch by the end of our first year of operations, and this is known as the Garuda App Builder. Um, and this is targeted at developers. So, this is, I think, something I can do without an internet connection. So, what you're looking at right now is the Garuda App Builder, and um, we have a library of common modules that you would need to create any drone mission. So, if I were to recreate the coffee delivery mission that we kind of saw earlier on, all I would need to do is drag and drop a map view which would render the map in the area and a path builder that would help me construct the flight path onto the mission. And just like that, with a visual drag and drop interface, I can build any app that I want. So I have modules for um, you know, uh, different kind of sensors, geography, air, uh, infrared, um, bar graph, line graph, etc. So, we're, we're also very really excited to launch an API and SDK uh, by the end of our first year of operations, which is, uh, uh, again, meant for developers. And we want developers to build out very exciting drone apps. So, and they can even package these apps together, deploy it to the marketplace, and charge money for it. So, drone apps, how about that? Okay, uh, let's talk money. Um, the market size of the drone industry as of uh, March of this year was estimated to be around $89 billion, and conservative estimates have this uh, bigger quadrupling by 2015. So, uh, in order to get a big share of this gigantic market, we are working to lock down some key strategic partnerships. We are really excited about the group that we are talking to and who will be lending us their expertise in various domains. They are nuclear energy companies who are interested in using our product uh, for measuring radioactivity levels without putting human lives at risk. Uh, uh, we are already in talks with civil defense forces in the Southeast Asian region and um, they will be using our systems for assisting first responders. Uh, we will be talking to oil and natural gas companies in the future uh, for oil and natural gas pipeline surveillance. Uh, and finally, the Barron Group at Stanford is already uh, helping us out expanding the medical field sector. Um, and last but not the least, we expect that Within three years, Amazon will be using our products. Uh, Amazon will be using our drone systems to deliver your parcels. So, all of this would not have been possible without some extraordinary people on the team. Um, we have Mark Young, right here, who is who has over 15 years of experience building robotic systems at Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, we have Mather who is uh, an enterprise-grade cloud platform genius with 15 years of experience building scalable web products. Uh, Billy Clary is, um, you know, he's amazing. He's, he has 20, more than 20 years of experience building out his own drone systems 
and using them for aerial videography. A cool fact, he was the aerial videographer of Jason Mraz's 93 Million Miles music video. And last but not least, uh, my name is Pulkit, and I'm a two-time entrepreneur out of the valley. Um, I'm also one of the top 20 under 20 entrepreneur finalists chosen by Peter Thiel, who's the founder of PayPal. Uh, I've done extensive drone research at Stanford University, at the Stanford AI Lab, and I've been a drone hobbyist for the last four years. And finally, we want to give a big shout out to Alfred Mandel, uh, who is who was one of the like the first people who worked with Steve Jobs, who introduced Lisa and the Macintosh, and um, you know he was the first stakeholder in Napster, and is now has now agreed to uh, take the first spot in our advisory board. So. Um, I want to finish off by talking about the vision that we have for the future. Um, we really believe that the drone industry is much like the personal computer industry back in 1978. Um, we, are the Macintosh, we are past the Apple II and we are approaching the Macintosh of the drone industry as we speak. Um, and history has proven that whenever any transformative technology opens its gates to the general public, it creates a revolutionary change. So you could choose to sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, and wait for the future to come to you. Or you could come and talk to us, partner up with us, and be a part of our mothership as we go out there and change the world. This is Guru Robotics. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, actually I understand you focus on the uh, development of system and software not hardware, but uh, you know, uh, basically your business is affected by uh, performance of drones, right? And uh, I want to know, so, you know, maybe uh, current performance of drones and, uh, you know, so, uh, how long is uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, flight duration, you know, over the typical drones in terms of uh, distance and the time? Uh, I, so, this question. Uh, you're asking about the current state of the art for drone capability. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, drones that you can buy off the shelf right now usually last for no longer than 20, 25 minutes. Uh, but things are, things are only going to get better. They're not going to get worse. Right? So, we expect that within a year or so, we'll be seeing drones that can last for 45 minutes of operation time while carrying a significant payload. So it's just a matter of getting the right technology together. And the truth is that the development of autonomous aerial drone, any sort of aerial drone, is really in its infancy. There aren't that many people working on it, and as more people start to look at this sector, we expect that a lot of innovation will be made. Yeah, now I'm just curious about uh, you know the graph chart about market size, and uh, could you show me again? Yeah. Uh, you might just give us a few seconds to switch back to the machine. Yeah, I just want to make sure that if the number includes some application for military, you know, like uh, you know, attack drones or something. So uh, the number was yeah, because uh, you know numbers, you know, sounds like it's huge market, but actually, so memory drones are used for maybe attacking people and uh, you know, right? It's uh, not a typical drone. Yeah, it's 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 not a typical drone. So, uh, the, at Garuda Robotics, we are completely uninterested in the military market. We are only looking at civilian applications. Yeah, exactly. This yeah. number of 89 million uh, estimate from this year is purely for civilian applications. Oh, really? Okay. In fact, it's, it's really purely for civilian applications. Really? Yes. So, the military market is also not something that you can easily break into. The barriers to entry are really quite significant. And you'll be playing with all of the established military contracts. So that's not something that we're really interested in. Okay, thank you. Um, can, can you, have you thought about the, the long-term regulation, um, regulatory implications that drones bring in? Again, I don't think anybody cares about drones as per se because a lot of them are locked inside laboratories and they can't fly more than 30, 20, 30 minutes. But once they are actually able to lift up a person, once they're able to actually have social impact on it, I think the regulations will be drastically different, just as helicopters are. So, I think the regulations will actually be relaxed. At the moment, uh, the US is the most restrictive and uh, restrictive airspace regulations anywhere in the world. And what they say is, you can't fly anything. 
Uh, and that was the case for the last 15, 20 years. So even research groups had a lot of trouble getting licenses to fly anything uh, for the research and development. But what happened two years ago is that Congress mandated that the FAA had to come up with a plan for integrating drones into civilian airspace. The reason is very simple. You can't stop people from building their own drones. You can't stop people from buying these $500 drones and flying them all over the place. So the only solution is to accept the market to be there and regulate it somehow. So uh, Conoco Phillips was recently granted a waiver to make use of two autonomous drones to inspect uh, one of the oil rigs, offshore oil rigs. Uh, and something that we didn't realize until about a year and a half ago was that Australia actually allows you to fly most drones uh, below a ceiling of 150 meters without any license at all. So I think we're going to see an opening up of regulations. Uh, we are going to see that these drones have to be integrated into civilian airspace somehow. And I think that as this market is really in its infancy, like I mentioned earlier, we will try to figure out as we go along how best to deal with privacy concerns and trade those off against the benefits that drones will obviously give us. Uh, I think uh, when, you, when you talked about the app, app builder, I think that'll be one of the keys to your success is that it's not the app builder but the marketplace. Or for example, yes, if I'm trying to find my friend who broke his leg and he's stuck on the mountain, you need a litany of applications and algorithms that are separate from the actual uh, platform, right? Like image recognition, barometric pressure testers, um, overall uh, you know, uh, climate change uh, implications and whatnot, and all roll that into somewhat of a rudimentary AI so that when you actually map the path, they don't run into a mountain and they don't get shut down by uh, some crazy redneck, right? Yeah. So I think the, the key there is that we're not interested in having everyone spend time building the same things over and over again. So if someone's built a working module for uh, finding someone in the desert canyon, have that used by someone else to do some really cool application. Okay, as long as that's planned as somewhat of a marketplace action, that'll be very great. And one last, last comment that I would like to make is that you're currently thinking about drones as in the flying drones, but if you look at what Berkeley is doing, right, they have really creepy looking uh, four-legged monsters um, that actually are able to um, you know, lift really heavy things and traverse very, very diverse terrains, right? I think that could be a very, very natural market to bleed in and actually much more feasible in the future for your applications of saving lives and getting logistical things done. Like that. So uh, it's like you're pulling our grand vision and roadmap uh, this is exactly something that we thought about. We are not going to limit ourselves to aerial drones. Uh, it's just that this is a sector that is currently untapped. Uh, but absolutely, we see that any sort of robotic system, anything that requires command and control of fleets, will be able to benefit from the platform we're offering. And so eventually, we're going to scale out to any sort of uh, ground vehicles, aerial vehicles, underwater vehicles even. And we want to have a real TV platform support all these operations. Okay, um, so yesterday when we were looking at the 3D bioprinter thing, right, it's kind of easy for uh, non-crazy tech investors who are used to looking at photo sharing apps to be quite easily wowed by something that you just pull out from a lab. Um, when I look at this slide, what sticks out to me is that if the world is spending $356 billion on surveillance drones. Which, which company is already producing that kind of revenue, number one? And number two, and what equips you to take that money away from them? Or at least, you know, take part of the gigantic number later. Uh, I'm not sure I understood. Uh, you're saying that there will be companies... You're going to fight, you're gonna fight people who's already producing $356 billion worth of drone, surveillance drone revenue. That's what this graph says, right? Uh, no, so this is the, the estimated market size for all civilian drone applications. So that, that number, all those numbers here on here, uh, sum up the potential revenue. So for example, 89 billion, for example, that's like this year. That means like uh, there are companies producing 89 billion dollars worth of drone revenue. There is demand, there's up to 89 billion dollars of demand. Ah, so it's not existing market. So perhaps you could have done a better job. So where's, so where's the estimates coming from then? Uh, there are a bunch of uh, reports that we've collated from different consultancy firms, different firms that are working also in the same space. Uh, uh, this is a terribly misleading slide. This is, they're estimating this based on compilation of a few sources. 
So, so tell me this, who's producing drones today? Who's already selling surveillance drones to oil and gas companies, to you know, the rest of the examples? Non-military, non-military uses. The short answer to that is no one, because of these restrictions. The restrictions that were in place all the way up till uh, June of this year, when Konoko Phillips got the waiver, applied to drones. And that's really about as dangerous as it gets, right? Flying drones over an oil rig. Uh, but there's clearly demand there. We're talking to energy companies that are were really, really interested in surveying, uh, surveilling their tens of thousands of miles of pipelines, which they currently survey using helicopter flights that cost $3,000 an hour. So I think the market does exist. I can see that the numbers may be a little easy right now, but I think the market exists and it will be huge. No, I have no doubt that the market exists and will exist and we're going to see the gigantic number, you know. But what I kind of find a bit dishonest is that that's not what you're trying. I mean, of course, you can sell the sizzle and not the steak. This is the pitch. It's supposed to get people excited, you know. But what I'm looking for is to invest in the business. And I, what I need to get a sense of, and it's not just me, it's just for investors who give you money. They want to know how much money do they need to give you for you to get to, to, get to A to B. And what's that B? So over here, it's like, we say, okay, this technology is cool. It's like watching a YouTube video where this robot comes and clean your house, like, woo, you know what I mean? So I, I got that from this pitch. But I didn't get the feeling that you guys really wanted to sell this as a business and say, okay, we're gonna, right now, nobody's buying any drones. Konoko Phillips have two drones going out there and they paid some other dude to build it, but we built some kick-ass drones. And we're waiting for regulations to, you know, we're talking to tons of people to build the market for drones. So we're going to be market creators for drones, right? So, I don't know, you have something along those lines, and that's, that's why I've got a certain... I'm going to raise money, because I need to keep building this stuff, until we've got time to serve the market that's going to emerge. Right, so uh, I think that's more of uh, our fault in not conveying that, conveying the correct picture. Uh, so I think yeah, no, no problem, which is why the Q&A is fantastic, because right now I kind of get that clearer picture, and then the more we talk, because I love what you guys are doing, no doubt about it. And I'm sharing this with you because I want to know more, and not because I want to like, you know, screw with you on stage. It's not something I'm trying to do. Um, secondly, is that we, 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 we talked about um, getting into a point where you can actually carry out those missions. And then the, what you mentioned was currently the drones fly in 30 minutes and then they die, and that will change over time. So what's really exciting is, the, and I'm not a Stephen Hawking scientist or anything, but <laughs> but what's stopping these drones from flying more than two hours or ten hours? Is it battery technology primarily? It is battery technology. Uh, so drones exist that make use of petrol yeah. or gasoline for fuel. Those are primarily the military, military ones. Yeah, right? the one that uh, killed Nabila's grandmother. Yes. Yeah, okay. That's good. <laughs> but we are about saving lives. Sure, sure. Okay, so what's super exciting to me is that when Tesla was approaching, when Elon Musk was approaching no electric car problem, the biggest barrier is battery. If you buy an expensive sports car, you want to drive from San Francisco to LA, right? To, to high five with uh, Moby and Steven Spielberg down there. That's what you want to do. But if your car can't last that long, like nobody's going to buy that sports car. So Elon had to challenge a lot of the scientists to push on battery technology. What's super fun is if that Garuda Robotics, in your R&D to build drones which fly longer, you in the process create a lot of patents for battery life, and like really kick-ass lightweight batteries that can last for a long time, you'll be creating something that's even bigger than the drone and robotics industry. And I, I think that's gonna be super exciting. So I look forward to talking to you guys, and thanks for sharing. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you gentlemen, a little glimpse into the future. Man. You know, it's funny, one time I was hiking with somebody and he got bitten by a snake right in his ass. So I called the doctor and the doctor says, well, there's only one way to do it. You're gonna have to bite it and then suck the poison out. I said, oh my God. And then my friend said, what did the doctor say? I said, the doctor says you're gonna die. <laughs> How about the start of arena participants? All these eight guys, how awesome are they, guys? And the four judges giving the tough love and, and good insights. That's great. So what we are going to do now is to um, have two more presentations. I'm going to ask the uh, 
the judges, I guess, uh, you guys are going to come back up for the prize presentation, so please uh, feel free to exit the stage. And we're going to be bringing back up uh, the CEO of Benox Ventures, and he's going to be sharing some insights. Uh, he lives in Silicon Valley, um, from Silicon Valley, and, and bring that uh, uh, insights uh, here to uh, apply to Asian startups. Are we, are we ready to rock with that? Is, that? is that all ready to go? And then after he presents, then we're going to have a, a little talk from Global Brain, and then the prize presentations. We now have three amazing prizes. We have uh, an iPad mini from Hotels Combined, hotelscombined.com. We have a three-year free virtual office space from the office, and we have US $10,000 uh, from Tech in Asia for the prize winner. So, uh, two more uh, quick presentations until the final prize. Put your hands together, please, everybody. Help me to welcome Fedox Ventures CEO, 